If you want to beat the chess pot Amir, then you need to learn how to exploit the weaknesses in his play. And after playing a couple of games with him online, I have made a list of the typical mistakes that he makes in his games. And those are, first, he gives up material very easily. Second, he makes time-wasting moves, meaning those moves which doesn't improve his position at all. Third, he creates pawn weaknesses. So now that you know what mistakes does he typically makes in his game, let's learn how to exploit them. I'm going to choose random mode over here and I get the white pieces and I'm going to start my game with the king's pawn opening. And he does the same and now I'm going to attack his e5 pawn with my knight. He defends with his knight. Okay. And now I'm going to open up the center with d4. Let's see what he plays. Oh, he takes my pawn. I'm going to take back with my knight. And here he decides to fianchetto his bishop, which is a good move. I'm going to develop my other knight over here. He fianchettos his bishop. And now I'm going to develop my dark squared bishop as well. And now he plays d6, opening up the lines for his light squared bishop. I'm going to develop my light squared bishop too, but I'm going to get it over here. And he plays a6 over here. Probably he's planning to expand on the queen side with a move like b5, but I'm not going to allow him to do that because I'm going to double up his pawns by taking this knight over here. And he takes back. And as I rightly pointed out to you earlier, that he creates pawn weaknesses in his territory. And we just saw how he has doubled his pawns on the c-file. Since the queen side is open, I'm going to castle king side and get my king to safety. And now he's taking advantage of this semi-open b-file and my pawn is under attack. So I'm going to protect it with my queen also forming a battery on this diagonal with the bishop. And he forms a battery with his queen on the biggest dark square diagonal on the board. And notice that he's still not focusing on getting his king to safety. He should have ideally got this knight out over here and should have castled. But what he's doing is just getting his queen out and keeping his king in the center. So I'm going to take advantage of the situation and I'm going to start an attack on the king side. So I'm going to play f4. And he's just kind of ignoring my king side attack over here. He's playing a5. That's not a good move. He should have played knight to e7 so that he could castle king swipe quickly and get his king to safety. But instead, what he's playing is a5. So I'm just going to break in the center with e5. Attacking his queen. Queen moves. And now I'll play b3. Let's see what he plays. Rook b4. I'll play queen a3. Attacking this unprotected pawn over here. And he took my pawn. Okay. And here, I can either take this pawn or I can move this pawn forward. I think moving forward is a better move because he can capture with his queen because the pawn would be protected by my rook. So if he needs to capture, he will have to mess up his pawn structure by capturing it with the G pawn. And that will create double pawns on the F file. Also, f5 is a tempo gaining move because it attacks opponent's queen. So I'm going to play f5. <gasps> Did he just give me a free queen? Seriously? And you guys have been thinking how to beat this guy? It's simple. Just attack his pieces and he's going to let you win. I'm going to capture this free queen. I mean, this guy does give material, but queen, that's too much. And now he captures back my pawn. Okay. Now I'm going to capture this free pawn over here. And going to fork these pieces. Okay. The rook moves back. Now I can either capture this pawn and attack this rook. Or I can capture this pawn. And this is a trap piece. Black can save this. So I'm going to capture this pawn over here. He can save the rook. So I'm going to take it for free. See, he is giving me free material. And now bishop b4 is another bad move because his knight was under attack and he could have easily saved this knight by playing f5 because then the knight would be protected by this light squared bishop over here. 
but he played bishop to b4 he's just giving me a free piece and i'm going to take that with a check oh he says my kids have never checked me before lol and now here i can take this free rook over here but there's no hurry since the king is on the run and is stuck in the center of the board i'm going to take advantage of that so i'm going to attack this king with my rook over here rook d1 check he blocks the check with his bishop i'm going to invade in his territory with my other rook rook into f7 check he takes now if i take this bishop with my queen then the king will run back over here and i don't want him to escape i want to trap him over here so instead of capturing this and giving a check i'm going to take away all the escape squares of the king notice the king cannot go on these squares all of these squares are under my queen's control so i'm going to give check with my bishop and take away these two squares as well so the only option the king had was this e7 square and now i'm going to checkmate this king with my other bishop over here that was so easy so you just saw how emil easily gives up material in his game makes time wasting moves and also creates pawn weaknesses if you loved this tutorial then do like this video and subscribe to my channel i'm going to go back a couple of moves here i want you to tell me that if instead of king e7 if amir had blocked the check by his bishop over here then how could i white checkmated black's game in two moves let me know your answers in the comments box and i'll see you in the next video until then keep learning keep practicing